All right, what is up, guys? Nori back at it again. And in this video, we're going to go over Kazakh's jungle. Yes, I think Kazakh's, he's extremely a strong jungler right now. S plus tier. I've been playing a bit more of him, just getting the feel for him. And I think, well, he is extremely strong. And he should be a great pick if you guys like that assassin play style. Here, I'm going to just go over the game. And I'm just going to talk about my thought process and like how I think while I play the Kazakh's game. And for starters, I'm going to start blue here because I want to path ball. Why do I want to path ball in? Because... Currently in the meta, I would say 80% of the time you should be pathing a bot side. But this game, especially because I have Nautilus and Ash. So there's just like, it's just a lane that should be very aggressive. Right? Because like I have a support who's like a hook champion. A very aggressive champion wants to go in. And an enemy jungle matchup is Briar. So Briar is a bit of a farm jungler. She can cheese you, so you just have to watch out for that. But it's just up to you how you want to play against that champion usually Kha'Zix you generally don't want to do much early game I find it just very important to just farm and play for your jungle camps try not to get cheese too and the getting cheese is it's more about what champs you're playing against so this matchup against like the Briar for example I'm not super worried about getting cheese and stuff like that because she's not that strong here I, I save smite because i got a leash usually you leash you can just save smite if you want i do three camps and i try to go into like red really fast we have really good priority this is like the clear i prefer even though the, I, I say full clear what i full clear it, unless like there's literally nothing on the map i usually just do like a red just to be safe on these slower these like aggressive more fighting junglers like kha'zix for example because once i get this red i can still go for like ganks without feeling like i'm in a weaker position but also i can just keep full clearing too and it's just if you do the raptors there's a small chance that you might fall into like a trap where you could get invaded like if you want to be safer about invades and stuff you just pretty much do what i just said it can slow you down but a bit but sometimes it's worth it and don't worry about too much about like saving crap like smite for crap if anything like that pops up here, we clear is not the quickest. Usually, it's okay to give up crab and just play for like the other crab, for example. Necessarily, don't have to. You don't have to have every crab. You can like if if I wanted to, I could just win for the other crab here. I just want to go in here. Just getting a chunk on him is beautiful too. Like if I felt like it was too dangerous, I could just go for that top crab. But she's pathing up, so we saw forwards. So that means well. Crab's ours. And honestly, on Kha'Zix, it's kind of okay with your early games going like that. Like, you don't mind early games that are slow. Here, we can just go for a play. I should be able to get her. Oh, what? That killed? Ideally, I got that, but it is what it is. So here, you have a few options. You can just base... Because I have a Dirk by I, I just drop one word. I always like these entrance wards, okay? So when you play literally so many junglers, if you get an opportunity to just ward these entrances, ideally it's a bit further up, but... So if I, what I was going to do the before the mid-fight was about to start, I was actually going to ward here to get this entrance warded. I, I just really want to emphasize when you guys watching this video, ward entrances when you have chances to jungle. So here we're going to go top side. The reason why basing there is better, because once you buy this Dirk, it just increases your clear speed by extremely high amount. So it's like, if I just AFK farmed, it would have been slower if I just based and got my Dirk and then started farming. It just naturally speeds it, speeds it up very well. Here, I don't think I have a gank angle, so I'm just gonna not help him. Sometimes you have to say no to people that like want you to help because it's just not gonna happen. We have no CC to lock this guy down and he's like the win man. So you just have to say no to those situations. Especially when you invest time into an early gank already. It's like, if I go top there, my jungle is going down, right? Like, my path is going down. So if I go for a play like that, I, I want to feel like it's 100%. And when I looked up, I looked at that lane and I said, no, this is not 100% gank. So I just said no to it. And you just have to have that kind of confidence to just say no to these kind of plays. I kind of want to get a chunk off, but if they're not isolated, it's not worth the dash. I also have to watch out and respect the Briar, too. This guy face strikes me. I mean, I'm going to chunk him, but I don't know if you will. 
respect respectfully. I'm just curious about what's going on on the map right now. I actually think this guy might be like lurking around here. I'm looking to flank on the on the Varus. Here now I kind of did like the the whole circle. I, I feel pretty confident that Briar's on in this area. I wasn't really talking about what I was doing. I was kind of looking for the jungler because now this is like a dragon timer because there's just no one really in sight here. So also if we were paying attention from the early clear, remember Briar was on the top crab? That pretty much tells us that her clear will take her to that top crab area. And she's probably on top crab again right now. Here I could go for Krugs. But I think Briar is about to look for a Varus gank. So I just want to see what happens. If this guy's going to shuffle in. I want to want to jump on him when he shuffles here. I think she's on my blue. But I just want to make sure about this. She was shooting it from here. So we just have to... Yeah, I mean, once the Briar direction was given away, that's really good for us. A very slow and steady wins the race kind of game. He was able to get our blue, bud. Oh, big boy. Big boy, Timo. There's a little, looking like a little chat up there. Thank God I don't have to help him. But yeah, slow and steady wins the race. Play a pen Pay attention to the enemy jungle position. I actually don't like doing dragon that much, but like, you just have to know when it's like, if it's good to do something you have to recognize it and do it so understand understand that kind of you have windows to do things and you have to be aware of the windows and when you understand these things you just will become better as a jungler think of things like these window time ears just kind of trying Pretty much I wanted to slow her, and then once I slow her there, we get off the the Q isolation. I queued quick there too for that. You know, Briar's a champion. She's really strong, but she's also very easy to int on. I'm going to be making videos on her too. I think she's a great champion to pick up though. You just have to understand when you play Briar, what situations you can fight. Because if you choose a wrong fight, you just die. So you just don't have ways to get out. So once you choose a bad fight, you just ruin your game. So you have to respect that. And also for Kazakh's build, we didn't really touch on it, but I think two builds are viable right now. Either you go with the Ghost Blade Umbral or you go Eclipse Umbral. Those are like my two builds I've been going for. And those are like my two little, my like Kazakh's builds right now. It really depends on the comp. This game, we're going to go with Ghost Blade Umbral, Ghost Blade build. Because I think I'm close to getting Ghost Blade one by. I, I, I like Ghost Blade into Umbral. I think Umbral in your build is just really good because it gives you that like little, kind of like a little bit of damage. It gives you a little bit of that like, cheap greedy damage, but also it helps you clear wards even though you're like, I don't even care, no one wards in my ELO. Bro, having the difference between one-shotting like a ward and having to auto three times as Kha'Zix is misery. Like, it just isn't fun. Trying to get the isolation queue. I have a lot of money. I have a lot of money. Oh, what the fuck? I thought he was isolated. Well, it all worked out. I mean, you can just bait out Briar abilities, right? It's like not that hard. Hitting that red just reveals. I need this red buff. I was hoping Alistar was isolated. I would have killed him with that Q auto. But the creep was still in range. But you know, I just played that really slow. I always take these isolation cues. Like if I get these free cues off, it's just a good fight. Like the way your mind should work when you're playing Kha'Zix is like if, if I can get these isolation cues off, it's good. If I'm in situations where I get free cues, the amount of damage it's just too much like for the enemy champ to to really even control. So like I'm happy about getting these isolated cues off. He's probably R'ing from base. So he just kind of like 
dodge it out a bit here. Funny enough, the timing here. Yeah, Briar's just in, but Kha'Zix will take you to places you've never gone before. Like, Plat. But yeah, here's the Ghostblade build. CDR Boots is still pretty good. The reason why CDR Boots is really good is mostly because Kha'Zix really relies on ulti to be able to make plays, but also to just not die, right? Like, it's like his offense and defensive ability. So the CDR just really guarantees, like, each time there's some situation, a play perhaps, you will have your R up and ready to go. And that's like a very important thing for a champ like Kha'Zix who really, really relies on it. And you can always play around like kind of like crowd control and stuff like that with Merc Trust. You don't really need it all the time. Though I, I, I do go Merc sometimes, but I feel like Tabbies would just not be the play because you're just more often or not. You're more often than not just taking these weird situation fights. I won't, I'm actually just kind of looking for Briar. I don't know how I let that in. Oh my god, I should've just ran past there. You can easily dodge like Briar E. I mean, I shouldn't have let that hit me. That was my bad. That was a bit of a troll. Good job, Varus. This guy's name is Varus. I didn't even notice that. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's incredible, actually. Yeah, Sloppy, just don't get hit by that. It's worth it. Place are about to fall, so I'm just gonna drop Herald mid, let them deal with where it ends up going. And yeah, you're just like an item spike champion. You have to play for these spikes and items and stuff like that. Always wait out the R there. Dodge her Q and then she just dies. The, the Briar is all about dodging her E and you just dodge it. She has no way to lock you down enough to make it hit you. If you don't get hit by it, you generally win. But eventually she'll be a problem. If she, she wasn't so weak, like, we might have been a little more worried, but... Yeah, dodge those abilities. Be smart. Play for objectives on Kha'Zix, too. Don't know what happened there, but... Oh, my butt hurts, man. I swear, man, I always, like, have problems finding this, like, really comfortable position. But it's okay. Yeah. A rule of thumb for you guys, if you just want to think about, is if it if it's isolated, it's good. If it's not isolated, this guy's illegally splitting here. Bro, I'm getting stuck. Never mind. I got fucking beta there. Holy shit. What is this damage, man? Well, I guess I got beta there. Still playing for Umble, so we're gonna wait a bit. I don't know if we need an extra sword. I should've just walked up on him and didn't really... I shouldn't have used like my R so early. I was a bit worried I might get collapsed on. But I didn't need to worry about that. But it, it, it all worked out in the end. There, I mean, I just moved in between the soldiers, so I wasn't taking full damage. By the way, Ziggs is broken. Also, a triple kill. Now I'm back in the game. You have to respect. If it's not isolated, it's bad. I mean, this is what I'm emphasizing on, but... But it's like an actual, like, important, important thing. It, it sounds so stupid, but... Just if it's isolated, it's good. If it's not isolation, no, no bueno. Don't take fights if without the isolation damage. Super rich, by the way. Super rich. We out here making gold. You, you, what are you doing? Sitting on your butt, not making these sick ass plays. You gotta jungle like a child, you know? You have to have the mamba mentality. Here, this is a power spike. This is level 11, it's huge for us. We get power spike, we get upgrade and all that kind of stuff. Here I'm gonna go Umbro because I still need it for clearing wards. Could go Claw too, not a bad item. 
third item, you have a few options. I don't think I need grudge yet, so I'm just gonna go. Edge of Night, and then I'm gonna go into my grudge. I personally find this build to be the most effective. What I really like about Umbral, it just tells you if there's wards. If you're trying to flank or play a fight in the side lane, you just get spotted and it ruins like your chances to play. Champs like Rengar don't really need this. He doesn't really have that problem because he can just R in from super far. But a champ like Kha'Zix really has to play around like an edge, like a wall. And this is like the power that Umbral it will deny the vision. It's a very cost efficient item. Here we're just going to go slow. Probably clear the ward while we're at it too. Somehow he's actually no, he's dead. Oh, well, we could take the wave. I'm gonna just take the wave because Timo's dead. And yeah, when you go Q evolves, it's really important to be playing for those isolation Qs. Resets the cooldown by half. We went blue Pokemon on average is like, it's just fine to have. I don't know who's behind him, but mm. good news is you can kind of heal up on this. I mean, she's never gonna hit that. I'm mostly using it to heal. Ah, that's her flash. Yeah, I mean, that's not really that much damage, but I'm going to heal up fast. Like I said, we just want a W here. Heal up and go in the fight from an angle. Well, at this point, we're just going to finish farming. Oh, shit. Should have messed up my jump a bit. But it's okay. I mean, that's decent play. We'll take it. Don't die, don't die, don't die. Do we have an Edge of Night? We don't have Edge of Night. Edge of Night would be the item we're playing for, but. Because we don't have it, we're just going to keep farming. Though I am close. We do have Futures Markets. Futures Market will get us really close as well. I mean, this guy can finish this. I don't really want to do it. I'd rather he just finish it. So this is where you get really strong. This is really good because Edge of Night will give me a lot of that survivability that I, I would most likely lack. It's mostly like getting engaged on can be really hard as Kha'Zix. Like an Alistar jumps on you, stuff like that just hurts. Hurts real bad. Here I'm actually really happy to fight, but I don't want to start. I just want to go on him fast, get some damage. Okay, your boy's still going. Yoink, yoink. Yeah, not bad. I mean, I'm really happy. You know, chunking that Alistair is really good for the start of that fight. You love to see it. You love to see it. And then after that, we just kind of play slow. That's generally how you want to play Kha'Zix. the fuck? You're just dead. Beautiful play by the Ash, by the way. She was just trying to get that fast reset. You know, you gotta really respect that kind of dedication to the to the base, you know. Here I think we might be able to kind of like one shot someone, get like a quick pick. Yeah, this matchup doesn't look too good for her. Here, I just want to heal up and get the red. 
if the asshole comes, like, we're just gonna kill him, too. Because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a rabid dog at this point, bro. Ain't nothing you can say to me. We're just off the chain, bro. Leash off. And here we're gonna go into, like, grudge. You just you want your armor shred? Some grudge or whatever. Last whisper item you want. Mortal reminder is not bad if you need heal code. Honestly, these two are pretty similar now. Good thing about this one is a bit cheaper, but it's mostly if you really need heal cut. But honestly, I don't know how much heal cut actually does. The problem I have about heal cut item is like, hold on a second, Timo. You need help on that crab? You definitely do. Ain't no one doing a crab next to me, bro. Here, I feel pretty confident to outsmite a briar. We just have to avoid the briar R coming in. Because my smite does 1200, my Q does 300, we can just kind of time it together if we really wanted to. I just want to play the fight slowly. Yeah, I mean, I honestly think I played that fight incredibly well. But that's just how you have to play the fight. Really careful about when you go in like i was i was patient i saw kind of the angle where i could isolate q someone like a, a zero like if i don't get isolation you know what your boy's not going in that's just a big big important thing when you play you have to remember that personally i don't think we can end here but just let it ride my man let it ride well let it ride varus i think we two inhib them if they try to go in again it's fine but as we're retreating too, we just always take jungle camps, stuff like that. There is no camp, so I'm just gonna base. So here we go into the thing. Usually my last item is more about like uh like my last item is Maw or GA. Depends on the game. I find if if this game I'd probably go Maw. Because I need MR. So I'd probably go Maw here. Usually your last one is either Maul against like AP threats or GA against like the, the armor threats. Here I'm just kind of taking the fight slow. I was hoping I can get that W slow on them but... Obliterated. I mean, you love to see it. You love to see it. All around good plays. But yeah, we're talking about builds. I, I like Ghostblade in these fast tempo games. Or I go Eclipse. Either one is really good. So it's up to you what you want to build. But don't go Dustblade anymore after the nerfs. Dustblade is not good. Try not to get baited by that item. And I, if I don't go Umbral first item, I go Umbral second. I think it's just really important. I think it, it's like that cheap Lothari item that just gives you the spike you kind of want to get to. Right? Like you want that power spike with the, that high amount of eight base AD, like 60 plus 50, 110 AD for such a cheap amount. And while the Edge of Night only gives you 50 as well, but you do need Edge. But the Edge is not going to help you snowball early. So going Edge of Night second... It just doesn't really give you that, really that carry potential, which we want. Here, I'm just going to wait for picks, right? If anyone walks in, free damage, stuff like that. Preferably, I want a Zix or someone. Or this guy, he walks a bit more. We gotta dodge the spells here. Boink. Yeah, I mean, just play smart, play around your invisibility, play around your damage. All that kind of stuff will help you carry. And, you know, I think Kazakh's really strong. I think he's a good champion to play. I, I recommend for you guys want to play that carry potential. Those are the items I think are the best. So, yeah, if you, if you do them, what I just said, you're going to have a great time playing. I think it's going to go really well for you. Just remember the important stuff about the isolation queue. You know, that's just really going to help you carry the game away. And yeah. 
If you guys like the video, uh, be sure to like, subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the next one and take care. Bye-bye.